Good morning everyone. Today we shall discuss a part of the heterocyclic compounds topic, which are the six-membered heterocyclic compounds. Six-membered heterocyclic compounds, as you can imagine from the nomenclature or from the name of the class, are compounds that have a cycle, since we are saying heter heterocyclic. The word cyclic means that you have a ring. So what you expect is that you have a ring which is six-membered. So you have a six-membered ring. And then the word, or the part, hetero. Hetero means something is different. The common feature of most organic compounds is that they are all composed of carbons and hydrogens. So the common is the carbons and the hydrogens. So if we're saying heterocyclic, this means that you have a heteroatom, something other than the carbon and the hydrogen within the ring. We will mainly discuss the nitrogenous heterocyclic compounds, which means that you have a nitrogen in your cyclic compound. You can have one nitrogen, you can have more than one nitrogen, two nitrogens, you can have one ring, you can have another ring fused to this ring, you can have it as saturated compound or you can have it as unsaturated compound all these can be considered as six-membered nitrogenous heterocyclic compounds we will discuss as we have mentioned a monocyclic one ring compound containing one nitrogen the most uh, mo the most important example of these compounds are the pyridine compound. Pyridine is a benzene ring in which one of its carbons has been replaced by a nitrogen. This is pyridine and sometimes we call it pyridine. So it's either pyridine or pyridine. It depends on how you, you like to pronounce it. Okay, if we start discussing the pyridine, it's a benzene ring in which one of its carbons has been replaced by a nitrogen, which means that we expect it to be aromatic. But let's check the, heto the, the requirements of aromaticity and see if it is fulfilled by the pyridine structure. Requirements of aromaticity were four requirements. Number one, you need to have all carbons as sp2 carbons or all atoms are sp2 atoms. You need to have a planar structure. You need to have a continuous resonance and finally your compound needs to fulfill Huckel's rule if you apply this to your compound you will find that all atoms are sp2 atoms as you can see all of them have a double bond attached to it a pi bond attached to all atoms which means that they are all sp2 carbons and if they're all sp2 carbons then this compound is planar you have a continuous resonance in your structure and then if we try to apply huckel's rule we will have three double bonds each double bond contains two pi electrons and you have a nitrogen which is carrying a lone pair of electrons However, the nitrogen's lone pair of electron is not a part of the resonance of the ring. Why is that? Because as you can see in this structure, all the carbons of the ring have their p orbitals perpendicular to the plane of the ring. And the nitrogen has a p orbital which is perpendicular to the ring. All these orbitals have overlap. Uh, of the electrons and you have an electron cloud above and an electron cloud below however the lone pair of electrons as you can see exist in a plane which is parallel to the ring and perpendicular to these p orbitals which means that it is not part of the resonance if it's not in a, an orbital which is parallel to the ring then it does not um, uh, go into the resonance or it's not included in the resonance of the ring so the p 
the sorry the lone pair of electrons of the nitrogen are not part of the resonance so we will only calculate the pi electrons of the double bonds as you can see three double bonds with each containing two electrons which means that you have six pi electrons and the rule says that 4n plus 2 should be equal to the num number of pi electrons. And then you calculate the n. It will be equal to 1, which is a whole number. So even Huckel's rule is applicable. So this compound is an aromatic compound. Now, to synthesize pyridine or pyridine, you have a very simple way where you use the ethyl acetoacetate. If we draw the ethyl acetoacetate in a very, very simple way, you can draw it this way. As we have studied in active methylene compounds, you have an active CH2 and then attached to it from both sides a strong electron withdrawing group like the carbonyl group so this is the ethyl acetoacetate compound you need two molecules of this compound together with acetaldehyde one molecule and ammonia the product usually is substituted pyridine how can this reaction take place so that you would not forget it's better to draw it this way you will have the two molecules of ethyl acetoacetate as the horizontal, sorry, as the vertical bonds. This is the bond between the CH2 and the carbonyl. So you will have the carbonyl here and attached to this carbonyl, you have the CH2, here it is, and you have a CH3. So you can draw the CH3 as a substituent outside the ring. Now, the CH2 is attached to a carboxylic ester group. So now you will have the COO ethyl. Let's draw the same on the other side. You have the ethyl acetoacetate. Now you have both structures. Now you have two carbonyls which, when reacted, the best uh, thing to react with from your reactants will be the ammonia you have an ammonia group so it can condense with the carbonyl so you place it down right beside in between the two carbonyls and then you have the aldehydic group of the acetaldehyde to react with the active methylene as you know active methylenes can react with aldehydes and ketones or alkyl halides so to, now we will react it with an aldehyde so if you draw you will have a condensation here producing the two bonds of the pyridine with the nitrogen here and then you have the two vertical lines that we have already drawn before and then you will have another condensation here between the hydrogens and the oxygen and this will draw the second line the second two bonds at the top here you have the method now this carbon is this carbon the nitrogen is right here you have the two bonds vertical bonds here they are and then you have to place the substituents. You have a methyl group attached to this carbon. So now this carbon is attached to a methyl group, attached to these two carbons, the ethyl carboxylate, and attached to these two carbons are the methyl groups. So let's draw these. And we have a methyl and a methyl. You have here a double bond and there a double bond. This compound by air oxidation changes to the pyridine compound substituted with the methyl groups and the ethyl carboxylate groups. OK, 
okay, if this is what you want as a product, then you have already reached it. However, if you need to get rid of all these substituents, you can very easily hydrolyze the, carbox, the ester groups into the carboxylic groups and then heat to decarboxylate. Again, you can use potassium per permanganate to oxidize the methyl groups. So now they are three carboxylic groups that can be removed by heating. So as we have mentioned, you start with two molecules of the ethyl acetoacetate, uh, and then one molecule of the acetaldehyde and one molecule of the ammonia. You end up with a partially saturated pyridine compound, which upon air oxidation converts to a substituted pyridine. As I have mentioned in the a previous slide you can easily hydrolyze this compound giving the carboxylic acid which can be decarboxylated by heat to give the methyl groups here minus carbon dioxide and then by potassium permanganate you can oxidize the methyl groups into carboxylic groups which again can be decarboxylated by heat heat in a pre presence of the base can end up into the pyridine compound now to discuss the chemical reactions of this compound, we first need to deal with its nature. Its nature is that it's a basic compound, but how, to which extent is it basic? How basic is it? Is it as basic as aromatic compounds, aromatic amines, or is it as basic as aliphatic amines, or is it uh, weaker or stronger than either of these types of amines. We, we know that in case of pyridine, the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogens are localized on the nitrogen. They do not go into a resonance with the ring. So they are localized on the nitrogen. What is a base? A base is a compound that accepts protons. A base is a compound that can react with protons and accepts them. So how will it accept protons? It has to carry a negative charge or a lone pair of electrons and they have to be localized on your structure so that it can accept the proton. So now we have the nitrogen and the lone pair of electrons of the nitrogen have the lone pair of electrons have um, are localized on the nitrogen they are not uh, involved in any resonance within the ring so how to compare this with aliphatic amines if we have an aliphatic amine it has its lone pair of electrons localized on the nitrogen however it has a donating power from the R's attached to it and the nitrogen, the lone pair of electrons of the nitrogen, or the nitrogen is an sp3 nitrogen. Let's go to aromatic amines, something like aniline. You have the lone pair of electrons of the nitrogens present in a resonance with the ring. It's donated within the ring. So if we start comparing, we will see that the aliphatic amines are more basic than pyridine, However, pyridine is more basic than aromatic amines. How can we prove such um, a, a statement? We uh, can react pyridine with methyl iodide, any alkyl halide. We will find that the nitrogen is very easily alkylated by the methyl group in presence of a base. 
and it at this point it will become a quaternary nitrogen and it will carry a positive charge this compound upon heating will move the methyl group to the two and four positions So this is the basicity um, nature of these compounds and the evidence of such basicity. Looking at the organized slide, as we always do whenever we are discussing any topic, we can see that, as we have mentioned, aliphatic amines, specifically the tertiary aliphatic amines, are more basic than the uh, heterocyclic amines which are in turn more basic than the aromatic amines and as we have mentioned this can be proved by the reaction of pyridine with methyl iodide to give the pyridinium methiodide which can be converted into the picolines whether the two or the four picoline by just heating the compound now, to discuss the reactions of these compounds, we have to look at the nature of the resonance and the types of charges that can be placed by this resonance on the different atoms of the ring. Let's take a look at such a ring. We have the pyridine ring with its three double bonds and the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. As we have mentioned, you cannot perform a resonance from the lone pair of electrons to the ring. However, the nitrogen is a strong nitrogen atoms are electron withdrawing groups by induction. So by induction, it will attract the electrons from both carbons attached to it. So it will attract electrons from this carbon and from that carbon. On that side, the bond between the nitrogen and the carbon is a sigma bond so it's non-breakable when you attract the electrons it will not break however on this side the nitrogen and the carbon are bonded together by a double bond which means that upon the attraction of the electrons by the nitrogen the pi bond can be broken in this case you will have a negative resonance by the nitrogen producing a negative charge on the nitrogen and a positive charge on carbon number two within the ring. To continue the resonance, the adjacent or the uh, um, uh, pre double bond present on this bond will perform a second resonance, placing a positive charge on the four position. Further resonance will move the positive charge to the six or the other two position. So now if we look at such a resonance, we will find that the two, four and six positions carried a positive charge while the three and five positions did not carry a positive charge. So now, this is very much close to the nitrobenzene in nature. If you remember, when we were discussing nitrobenzenes, we said that the nitro group is a strong electron withdrawing group. It will place a positive charge on the two, four, and six positions, and it will not place a positive charge on the three and six. Accordingly, when you had an electrophile reacting with this structure, it usually attacked the three and five positions, which, which at that time we called them the meta position, and the nitro group was meta directing to electrophiles. And when you reacted it with a nucleophile, it usually attacked the two, four, and six positions. The same applies here to pyridine. If you react it with an electrophile, it will go to the three and five positions, while if you react it with a nucleophile, it will be placed at the two, four, and six positions. And this is why, because of this resonance. 
So if we start taking examples of such electrophilic substitution reactions, we have the regular substitution, electrophilic substitution reactions, which are the nitration, putting the nitro group at the three position, the sulfonation, place, placing the sulfonic group at the three position, the halogenation, placing the halogen group at the three position. But you cannot perform Friedel-Craft alkylation. It's exactly the same as in case of the nitrobenzene. Friedel-Craft alkylation is not that easily performed because of the electron withdrawing character of the nitrogen and the fact that the ring is deactivated towards electrophilic towards such an electrophilic substitution reaction. Uh, so discussing this on the organized slides, we will see that electrophiles are expected to go to position three because it is the only position in the ring, position three or five, they're exactly the same in an unsubstituted pyridine, uh, because they are the only position that did not carry a positive charge during the resonance. A second reason for such a reaction is that when the electrophile enters position 3, it will give three resonating structures for the stabilization of the intermediate. However, or for the um, a transition state. However, if the electrophile goes to position 4, you will only have two stable uh, uh, resonating structures and one unstable resonating structure. I don't need you to remember number two as a reason, just remember number one because it's the logic way of thinking of uh, how to uh, consider all positions of the heterocyclic ring for the electrophilic substitution reaction. So number two is just for demonstration if you do not understand it or if you do not you cannot remember it, so just forget about it. Just remember number one. As we said, examples of such reactions are the nitration, the sulfonation, the halogenation, whichever halogen we are choosing. As we always say in case of electrophilic substitution reactions, if you have an electron donating group on the ring, this will facilitate the electrophilic substitution reaction because it will activate the ring towards electrophiles. Now, the nucleophile, as we have mentioned, will be directed to the positions that carried the positive charge, which are the two, four, and six positions. One very famous reaction is what we call Chichibabin reaction where we react pyridine with sodamide in presence of ammonia, introducing an amino group to the two position of the pyridine. This is a very famous name reaction. How can such a reaction take place? As we have drawn, you have the pyridine. The nitrogen will attract the electrons, placing a positive charge at the two position which will be attacked by the amine giving the intermediate carrying the amino group and the hydrogen at the two position and of course the nitrogen is carrying a negative charge so now the negative charge will be uh, transformed into a double bond once more releasing the proton what other uh, nucleophiles can be reacted with the pyridine anything that's carrying a negative charge or a lone pair of electrons, for example, hydroxide, potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide, you can introduce a hydroxyl group. Uh, alk um, oxides, you can introduce an alk oxide group to the two position, or you can use the metal Al uh, alkanes, you can have an alkane attached to a metal, for example, lithium, 
alkanes and this way you will introduce an alkyl group to the two position so as we have mentioned your nucleophile will be directed to the two four and six positions uh, we have two reasons the first reason as i always say that it's the main reason it's because the two and four posi positions are the ones carrying the positive charge however we have the resonance if we try to introduce a nucleophile to the two position or to the three position and we will see that in case of the uh, two position we have a more stable resonating structures than in case of the three position again if you would like to discard or not consider number two as a reason it would be no problem you can just remember number one as a reason for such a reaction examples as we have mentioned are the chichi pattern where you introduce the amino group to the two position you have the alkyl metals where you introduce an alkyl group to the two position you have the hydroxyl group which can be introduced again to the two or four positions and this is the mechanism of the chichi pattern that we have just discussed now in each class of the heterocyclic compounds we will discuss some of their derivatives in case of pyridine we will discuss all five uh, possible derivatives however in the other classes we will just discuss two or three of each okay the five derivatives are you can have the pyridine ring carrying a halogen so these are the halogenated compounds or the chloro pyridines you can have it carrying a methyl group so these are the alkyl pyridines you can have it carrying a carboxylic group so these are the carboxylic pyridines it can carry an amino group which which may, uh, gives the amino uh, pyridines and it can have an n oxide you can introduce an oxygen to the nitrogen of the pyridine and these are very important class of compounds let's discuss each one of these let's start with the chloro uh, derivatives how can you synthesize chlorinated pyridine it depends on which position you want to introduce the halogen to if you reacted with chlorine in presence of any lewis acid but excess of the lewis acid you will introduce the chloro group as an electrophile to the three position however however if you want to produce the two or four chloropyridine you will have to go through the two step reaction where you will start with the chichibabin reaction placing the amino group on the two or four position and then you will take these compounds and react them with the very famous Sandmeyer reaction in Sandmeyer reaction you react an amino compound with sodium nitride and HCl to produce the, the diazonium salt and then you follow by reacting the diazonium salt with cuprous chlorides in presence of HCl the second part is the Sandmeyer the Sandmeyer reacts a diazonium salt with cuprous chloride in presence of HCl and replace the diazonium group by, by the halogen or the chloro group or the chloro atom uh, however to pr produce such a reaction you need to convert the amino group to the diazonium through uh, diazodizationization, using sodium nitrite in presence of HCl. Now, if we try to consider such compounds, how can they react? Simply, whenever you had a halogen in the previous, in all your previous studies, whether this was an alkyl halide or an aryl halide, in both cases, the main reaction was nucleophilic substitution reactions in case of alkyl halides these were very simple reactions however in case of aryl halides these were very 
difficult to perform reactions and they needed very drastic condition, conditions to be done. So all what you're going to do is that you will perform nucleophilic substitution reaction of the halogens with whichever nucleophile you like. You can replace it by a cyano group. You can replace it by an amino group. You can replace it by a hydroxyl group. You can replace it by an alkoxide group or any atom or any moiety that is carrying a negative charge. Now, to move to the amino pyridines, how can you introduce the amino group to the two or to the four position? As we have just mentioned, you can use the chichi babin reaction. Just start with the pyridine and react it with the sodamide in presence of ammonia and you will end up with the two and four substituted amino substituted pyridine however if you would like to introduce it to the three position you have two options it's either you can start with the pyridine introduce a nitro group to the as a, an electrophile to the three position and then reduce it to the amino group this is one way or you can just simply start with the nicotinamide which is a pyridine having a, an amide moiety at the three position and use the famous Huffman degradation reaction where you reacted with bromine in presence of sodium hydroxide and in this reaction if you remember you remove the carboxylic group or the kit sorry the carbonyl group you remove the carbonyl group and then you attach the amino of the amide directly to the R or the aromatic moiety that was attached to the carbonyl so you just remove this carbonyl and you put these together so you end up with the three amino pyridine the actions of these compounds are simply all reactions of amines you can acylate them you can halogenate al alkylate them you can perform all reactions of amines now we move to the pyridine n oxides these are compounds where the pyridine now is reacted to be in the form of an n oxide you have a coordinate bond between the nitrogen and an oxygen atom how can you perform such a reaction you start with pyridine and you react it with anything that says pair it's either a pair acid or a pair oxide and you will end up with the n oxide if you need to go back to the pyridine just reacted with phosphorus trihalide or just reduce it with catalytic reduction you will go back to the pyridine so you can use pair acids or hydrogen pair oxide and going backwards will be either phosphorus trihalide or just reduction why are these compounds very important in case of heterocyclic compounds six membered nitrogenous heterocyclic compounds because they have a very important function which is they cause the electrophile to be introduced to the two four six positions as we have mentioned when you were reacting pyridine you had the electrophile going to the three and five while the nucleophile was going to the two four and six However, in case of the N oxide, you will have both the electrophile and the nucleophile attacking the same positions, which are the two, four, and six positions. So this is very important in case of synthetic chemistry because it helps you direct your electrophile to the same positions that were carrying or were attacked by nucleophiles in case of pyridine. Why is that? Why does it uh, perform such a function? 
because of the following reasons. As you all know, drawing a coordinate bond can be done as we did, just as an arrow from the nitrogen to the oxygen, or we can place a regular covalent bond, but then we place charges, the nitrogen, which is the donating atom will carry a positive charge and the oxygen will be carrying a negative charge. So now the oxygen can perform a resonance with the ring to place a negative charge on the two position, followed by another resonance to place the negative charge on the four position followed by another resonance to place the negative charge on the six position so this is how this compound places out this substituent this is how such a substituent places a negative charge on the two four and six and again the same resonance that we have dis discussed earlier, where the nitrogen will attract the electrons of the bond to place a positive charge on the two, four, and six positions still applies. So now it depends on the attacking agent. The two, four, six can carry a positive charge and they can carry a negative charge. They can carry both charges. It depends on the attacking agent. If the attacking agent needs electrons, which means that your attacking agent is an electrophile, the nitrogen will not attract electrons from, from the ring, and the oxygen will dominate, and it will give electrons to the ring, placing the negative charges on the two, four, and six positions. However, if your attacking agent is something that has lots of electrons, at this case, or in this case, the oxygen will subside, will go to the side, will stop dom dominating, and it will leave the upper hand to the nitrogen to be able to attract the electrons and place the positive charge on the two, four, and six positions. And in this case, the nucleophile will go to these positions. Another class of these compounds are the methyl pyridines. If we have a pyridine ring and we introduce a methyl to this pyridine, it can be either at the two, the three, or the four position of the ring. To introduce a methyl to the three, to the two and four positions, as we have mentioned before, you can just React the pyridine with methyl iodide to give the pyridinium meth iodide, which upon heating will give the methyl group at the two and the four positions. However, to introduce the methyl group to the uh, three position, this is a very tedious uh, process, which I will not ask you to uh, memorize. So now we go to the reactions of these compounds. These compounds are called picoline or picolines. It, so they are either two picolines, three picolines, or four picolines, depending on where the methyl group is. These compounds react by condensation with aldehydes. Why is that? Let's Consider if we have, for example, the methyl group at the two or the four position. If we place a base in such a reaction, it can abstract the acidic proton of this methyl group, placing a negative charge on the carbon. In this case, the negative charge can be moved to the ring and stabilized by resonance. Accordingly, the, methyl, the hydrogen groups on the methyls are acidic and thus they can be involved in condensation reactions with aldehydes. So now if we have the pyridine with a methyl group at the two or the four position and then we react it with an aldehyde, we will have the hydrogens with the oxygen 
to give the condensation product whichever aldehyde we're using this R can be an alkyl group or it can be an aryl group so we can use acetaldehyde benzaldehyde whichever aldehyde we prefer finally we have the last derivative which is the pyridine carboxylic groups and these can be uh, synthesized from the methyls if we have a methyl group on the pyridine ring we can simply oxidize it using potassium permanganate to give the carboxylic group in its place so this is one method, just picolines. We, use, we start with picolines and we oxidize them using potassium permanganate. The other method is that we can use nicotine. And as you know, nicotine is a naturally existing compound or a naturally existing product where we have, this is the structure of nicotine. We have at the, two, at the three position, uh, um, pyrrole ring attached to a methyl group if we oxidize this compound using conch nitric acid it will end up with the three carboxylic pyridine compound so this is how you can you can synthesize them to uh, react them reactions of these compounds are simply the decarboxylation of the carboxylic group using heat in presence of a base to remove the carboxylic group and give the pyridine compound so if we take a look at these uh, reactions we will see or these derivatives we will see as we have mentioned that we have the chloropyridines where the chloro group is attached to the three or the two and four positions. They can be prepared either by electrophilic substitution reactions or chichi babin followed by diazotization and sand mayer reaction. Reactions of such compounds are nucleophilic substitution reactions where you replace the halogen with, with whichever nucleophile you prefer. The aminopyridines can be prepared by chichi babin or Hoffman degradation. The N oxides can be prepared using pair benzoic acid or hydrogen peroxide, and then they can be returned back to the pyridine compound using phosphorus trialyte. As we have mentioned, these are very important class of compounds, the N oxide compounds, because the N oxide group can place a negative charge on the 2, 4, and 6, and accordingly now the electrophile can be introduced to the 2, 4, 6 rather than the 3, 5 positions and then you can get rid of the uh, uh, N-oxide using the phosphorus trihalide or the reduction. As we have mentioned, this does not affect the fact that nucleophiles can still go to the 2, 4 and 6 positions. Other derivatives include the methylpyridines or what we call them the picolines. You can have the methyl group at the 2, 4, or 6, posi two, four, six or the 3 positions. In such cases, you can react these compounds with aldehydes performing alkyl condensation to give the condensed products. Finally, the pyridine carboxylic acids. These are the picolinic and the nicotinic and the isonicotinic acids. In these compounds, you can prepare them, or in this class, you can prepare such compounds using potassium permanganate to oxidize a methyl group present at the two or the four position, or you can use nitric acid to oxidize anything that has a carbon attached to the uh, pyridine ring at the three position the simplest example is nicotine resulting into nicotinic acid and as we have mentioned the best reaction of these compounds or the very famous reaction of these compounds are the decarboxylation using heat usually it takes place in case of the two 
and the four carboxylic derivatives. Uh, Six-membered heterocyclic compounds are very important compounds in case of medications. Very huge amount of medications present in the market are consisting of a six-membered heterocyclic compound. For example, if you look at something like nicotinamide or vitamin B3, you will find that it's a pyridine having an amide group at the three position. INH, the isonicotinic acid hydrazide, a very famous anti-tupercular agent, a, a, a drug that is used to treat tuberculosis or TB, is a pyridine compound having a hydrazide moiety at the four position. How can we prepare such a compound? Simply, if you start with the nicotine, sorry, if you start with the pyridine, you introduce a carboxylic group to the four position. You uh, uh, esterify this carboxylic group, giving the ester of the carboxylic acid, and then you react it with the hydrazine moiety to replace the ester by the hydrazide moiety. A very simple reaction in which you uh, simply uh, uh, use the uh, nicotinic acid, isonicotinic acid, you esterify and then you simply replace it by the hydrazine moiety. This is a very famous antituperculer agent and it, its discovery was a breakthrough in the treatment of tuberculosis. So this is the synthetic pathway that we have just discussed. And these are the two examples of drugs containing pyridine moiety. Now moving to another class of uh, six-membered heterocyclic compounds, we move to the uh, fused six-membered heterocyclic compounds, which is the quinoline. The quinoline has a pyridine ring fused to a benzene ring. If you remember pyridine, you can have several names for pyridine. It's either pyridine, which is a common name, or if you would like to name it according to the EU pack, it would be the azine. Aza from nitrogen, in means it's a six-membered and it's a, an unsaturated compound. Now, if we name quinoline, we have as in case of pyridine, the common name, which is the quinoline, or we can say that this is benzopyridine, benzo, and at the B bond, A, we have this bond as A, and then this as B. So we have the benzo, B, pyridine, or the benzo, B, azine. This is the quinoline, this is how you name it. Now, to synthesize it, we have a very famous name reaction known as the Scraub synthesis. What is the Scraub synthesis? You react aniline with another three carbon compound. If you take a look at the quinoline, you will have this ring attached to an amino group. This is this part. And then you have one, two, three more atoms or two, three more carbons that needs to be added to the structure. Which form of these three atoms are you going to use? We use the acrolein moiety. We place a double bond between two of the carbons and then we have one the third carbon as a carbonyl compound the reaction proceeds by first the amino group attacks this carbon moving the double bond to this breaking the uh, double bond between the oxygen and the uh, carbon giving this benzene ring is the same and then you have the nitrogen now attached to three carbons 
you have here the CH2, the other CH2, and then you have finally here the carbonyl and whichever substituents you have on this carbon. Now, a reaction takes place right here to close the ring of the quinoline. And you still have whatever that was here in this position. And you have double bonds that you need to make up for, which will be formed by oxidation to give the quinoline or the substituted quinoline. So if we give examples for such reactions, you can start with the aniline and it can be a substituted aniline say for example you place a substituent at this position and then you reacted with either glycerol we use glycerol which will be oxidized within the reaction to give the acrolein this glycerol gets oxidized to give the acrolein that we have just used and then the amino will attack and you will have the R at this position and now you will have the other ring of the quinoline bonded so if we have substituents on this ring, they will ap appear on the benzene moiety of the quinoline. And if you have substituents on the acrolein part, it will appear on the pyridine ring of the quinoline. So if we take a look at this, uh, um, at, the, at these information we will have as we said the quinoline it can be prepared using scrap synthesis where we use aniline and glycerol in presence of consulfuric acid arsenic pentoxide arsenic pentoxide and ferrous sulfate the role of these three to get together is to convert the glycerol into acrolein and to oxidize the on this, the partially saturated quinoline ring into the fully saturated one. Looking at such a reaction as we have mentioned it, you have the aniline, you have the acrolene, either substituted or unsubstituted, this can be a hydrogen or any R. You have the consulfuric acid, it will perform first the reaction, the attack from the amino on the acrolene, to give this uh, transition state and then cyclization will result into the partially saturated quinoline which will be oxidized using the arsenic pentoxide to give the quinoline compound. This is a homework that I need you to um, uh, answer and uh, submit to uh, uh, your demonstrators in the practical session where I need you to react the 4,5-dimethoxy-2-nitroaniline plus glycerol and give me the quinoline, the substituted quinoline product. Now, regarding the chemical properties of these compounds, as we always study in such cases, they will have two types of reactions. It's either the electrophilic substitution reactions or the nucleophilic substitution reactions. And then we will have an additional reaction, which is the oxidation reaction. Let's start by the, nucleo, the electrophilic substitution and the nucleophilic substitution reactions. If you revise the polynuclear compounds, you will remember that we had the naphthalene compound. And we said that if you have naphthalene and it has an electron withdrawing group at the one position of one of its rings, the electrophiles, if you reacted with electrophiles, you will have attack at certain positions, while if you reacted with nucleophiles, you will have attack at other positions. To revise such an information, we will first think of the nitro group, how it will affect both rings. 
The nitro group is an electron withdrawing group. So the ring attached to the nitro group is deactivated. The nitro group is attracting electrons from the ring to which it is attached. However, the other ring does not have this problem. It has its electrons uh, localized in it. Nothing is attracting its electrons away from it. So now if you are reacting the nitro naphthalene with an electrophile, an electrophile is something looking, looking for electrons. It has two choices. One ring that has its electrons, another ring that does not have its electrons because of the electron withdrawing character of the nitro group. So definitely the electrophile will be directed to the ring that does not contain the nitro group. However, it would be, however, if we react a nucleophile, which is something that has electrons, it will go to the ring that is lacking electrons because of the electron withdrawing uh, capacity of the nitro group. The same applies to quinoline. Quinoline is exactly the same as uh, nitro naphthalene. You will see this part in the polynuclear compounds. Uh, uh, specifically in case of naphthalene, when you study naphthalene. Okay, so now if I have a nucleophile, it should go to the same ring carrying the nitrogen. So it will choose this ring. However, if I react the quinoline with an electrophile, it should go to the other ring, the one that does not carry the electron withdrawing group, which is not, in other words, it's not carrying the nitrogen. Which positions of the uh, rings will the attacking agent go to? In case of the nucleophile, exactly the same as in case of pyridine, you have the attraction of the nitrogen attracting the elect attracting the electrons and placing the positive charges on the two and four positions so your nucleophile will go to the two and four position as in case of the electrophile in case they will teach you in polynuclear compounds that an electrophile in case of fused polynuclear compounds prefer to go to the atom directly following the junction. They prefer, this is the junction, they prefer to go to the atom directly attached to the junction. They do not prefer to go to the beta position. And you're going to be taught why is that. So you have the alpha position to the junction and you have the beta position to the junction. So the electrophile will prefer to go to the five and eight positions. So this is where your electrophile and your nucleophile will go to. So examples of such reactions, if you have the quinoline, if you reacted with nucleophiles like the nitro group, it will go to the five or eight positions while if you reacted with this is an electrophile while if you reacted with a nucleophile like for example the sodamide you will end up with your nucleophile at the two or four position. Again, if we um, convert the quinoline into the quinoline anoxide, you will have both electrophile and nucleophile, in this case, going to the two and four positions. So if we discuss such reactions, we say that due to the electron withdrawing character of the nitrogen, the two and four positions of the ring carrying the nitrogen will carry a positive charge, while the other ring is not deactivated by the electron withdrawing character of the nitrogen, and thus the electrophile will go to these positions. 
it will go to the five and eight position. It will not go to the six or seven positions. And the reason for this will be fully discussed in the polynuclear compounds. Examples for electrophilic substitution reactions are the sulfonation. As we said, it will go to the other ring, the benzene ring, in the 5 and 8 position. The nitro group the same, the halogens are the same. However, if we have a nucleophile, it will go to the two or four positions. Finally, the reaction, the third reaction that we said that it's going to be added to the quinoline um, class is the oxidation reaction. When we oxidize quinolines, the ring that is attached to an aromatic ring, we have here an aromatic ring, attached to it a carbon and a carbon, as we have mentioned in case of aromatic compounds in aromaticity, that if you have an aromatic ring, whichever aromatic ring, we do not care, and it has a C attached to it, and then this C is attached to whatever, we do not care what it, it is attached to, and we oxidize it with potassium permanganate, the final product is that all what I've just drawn will go away, and the carbon will be converted into a carboxylic group. So this applies here. You have, in case of the pyridine ring, it's an aromatic ring attached to a carbon and a carbon. So upon oxidation with potassium permanganate, you will break whatever is attached to these carbons and you will convert them into carboxylic groups. Remember that you can always decarboxylate a carboxylic group present at the two or four position by just heating in presence of a base. In case of quinoline derivatives, as we said, we're going to discuss specific examples. Uh, not all the derivatives that we have discussed in case of pyridine. We will discuss the N oxides compounds. As we said, you can prepare these by reaction with pair, whatever pair, pair acid or pair oxide from the actual quinoline compound. And you can go back using the phosphorus trichloride. And when you produce these compounds, reacting them with electrophiles will give the same as reacting them with nucleophiles, which is the attack at the two and four positions. Whether the, comp the reacting agent is an electrophile or a nucleophile, it will make no difference. And this is the most important uh, advantage of the N-oxide compounds. In case, of, in case of the methyl quinolines, as exactly the same as in case of um, pyridines, methyl pyridines, you can perform aldol condensation because of the acidity of the protons on the methyl group to give the condensation product of aldol. Again, you can oxidize these compounds to give the carboxylic group in place of the methyl group. Finally, the halogenated quinoline compounds, if you have the halogen at the two or the four position, you can replace it with whichever nucleophile you like by nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, as we have mentioned, if we are going to discuss the quinoline derivatives, we will discuss the quinoline N oxides. You can prepare them, as we have mentioned, by pair benzoic acid or pair hydroxides. And you will produce the N oxide, which will cause both electrophile and nucleophile to attack the same positions which are the two and four positions. The methyl quinolines, as we have mentioned in case of pyridines, will react by aldol condensation to give the aldol product. The chloro compounds can be replaced, the halogen can be replaced by a nucleophile, whichever nucleophile you like, and you just remove the halogen and place the nucleophile in its place. So, finally, in case of the mono nitro nitrogenous 
um, six-membered compounds. We have one last example, which is the isokinurine. In this compound, we have the same structure as in case of kinurine. So this is your kinurine. You just move this nitrogen to the two position. So now if you try to nomenclate such a compound, it will be again a benzo and a zine, but it's not a B, it's a C, A, B, C. So this is the benzo C azine or benzo C pyridine or the isokinurine. All these are names of the uh, isokinurines. How can we prepare it? We prepare it using a very famous reaction known as the bischler nabiralski synthesis. If you look at this compound, we will just break the structure at this point. So what we have here is a benzene attached to a carbon and followed by an amino group. Or you can break it right here and you will have at this point a benzene attached to one two carbons and then an amino group you can use this method in case of this method you will have to add two more carbons and in case of this method you will have to add one carbon this is the easier and this is the bischler naberalski this is a difficult way to use so let's go and see how we can do the bischler naberalski you will have something as simple as benzyl halides what you need is as we said a benzene ring having two carbons and then an amino group you need two carbons and then an amino group. you have here one carbon you need to add one more carbon so you add a cyano group you replace the halogen by a cyano group now you have two carbons the first carbon of the benzene and then you have the cyano by simple reduction of such a compound it will produce the di the two carbon followed by the nitrogen attached to the benzene ring now all what you need to place is a carbonyl so that it can react with the amino group and it can react with the benzene at the same time and place whichever substituents you prefer on this uh, carbonyl compound now to facilitate such a reaction instead of using an aldehyde and putting a hydrogen on the uh, carbonyl compound place a halogen this makes such a reaction easier now what happens is that you will have the benzene you will have the two carbons you will have the amino which will be attached to this carbon so this is your carbon and then you will have the r attached to it simply the double bonds can be introduced during the reaction resulting in your isokinurene compound again reactions of isokinurene are exactly the same as in case of kinurene you will have the electrophilic substitution reactions you will have the nucleophilic substitution reactions and finally you will have the oxidation reactions exactly the same as in case of kinurene we have a ring containing a strong electron withdrawing group which is the nitrogen and you have another ring which uh, does not have an electron withdrawing group accordingly this is an electron rich ring while this is an electron deficient ring so if you are attacking by an, an electrophile which means that it is looking for electrons it will go to the electron rich ring and as we have said it will attack the five and the eight position now if we at, are attacking using a nucleophile which means that it's it has electrons 
so it is not looking for electrons it's looking for something that can take electrons from it it will be attacking the ring containing the nitrogen it usually attacks the two position the position adjacent to the nitrogen we have two positions adjacent to the nitrogen one is alpha to the junction and the other is beta to the junction and we have mentioned before that usually attacking agent prefer the alpha position so it will go to the one position so if we have an isoquinoline and we react it with an electrophile i will have an attack at the five and eight positions While if I attack it by a nucleophile, I will have a product having the nucleophile at the one position. So these are the two very famous reactions, which are the nucleophilic and the electrophilic substitution reactions. Finally, if we perform oxidation reaction on such a compound, we will have two products rather than one product. The first product is the breaking of this bond. Or the breaking of the uh, benzene ring, giving this product. And the second product is the breaking of this ring. Now we have the benzene ring attached to two carbons, so it can get broken at these sides giving the benzene attached to two carboxylic groups so this is the oxidation reaction so as we have mentioned the uh, isoquinoline can be prepared using the bischler naberalski synthesis where we use a benzene attached to two carbons it can be prepared using potassium cyanide followed by reduction on benzyl halides and we reacted with an acid chloride in presence of phosphorus, pentoxide, palladium, and hydrogen and heat. This is to introduce the double bonds to the newly formed ring. So now we will have a substituted, a one substituted isoquinoline compound. This is an example of how the substituents will be distributed. Whatever is present on the benzene ring that we have started with will stay on the benzene ring and whatever is present on the acid group this is the acid all this is the r all this part is the r that was attached to the carbonyl compound will stay at the one position okay so as we have mentioned the reactions are either electrophilic nucleophilic or oxidation reactions in case of electrophilic substitution reactions they will again go to the five and eight positions while the nucleophilic reactions will go to the one position which carries the positive charge oxidation reactions will either break this bond giving the cinchomironic acid or it will break this bond giving phthalic acid now if we discuss the derivatives of these compounds again we will discuss the methyl compounds and as we are used to such reactions it will perform the aldol condensation exactly the same as quinoline and as in case of pyridine a condensation reaction if we have the halogen it can be substituted by nucleophiles using nucleophilic substitution reactions and finally if we have the n oxides and we react them with an electrophile it will go to the one position which is the position that is usually attacked with an a nucleophile rather than an electrophile
Now to discuss one last example of nitrogenous compounds, which is when we have two halogens rather than sorry two nitrogens rather than one nitrogen on the ring. We have three unsaturated examples and one saturated example. The one that we will discuss in full details is the pyrid pyrimidine or the pyrimidine compound. We can have the two nitrogens adjacent to each other. This is the 1,2-diazine, which is the pyridazine. We can have them separated by one carbon, which is the pyrimidine, which we will discuss in full details. And this is called the 1,3-diazine. Or we can have the two nitrogens on a straight line, uh, which is the 1,4-diazine or the pyrazine. You can totally saturate this compound and it will be the piperazine compound. As I've mentioned, we will discuss only the pyrimidine compound. To synthesize such a compound, now you have a pyrimidine. If you look at this structure, you will notice that this part can come from urea. How the, can we draw urea? Urea is two amino groups attached to a carbonyl. This is urea. So this part can come from urea. And then you have one, two, three more carbons. We use active methylene compounds like malonic acid. In this case, you will have a condensation to give the with whichever product or whichever substituents are here. You have this carbon. As you can see, you have this carbon right here attached to two carboxylic groups. Here we only have the carbonyls and the OH. We lost it during the condensation. And then they get attached to two nitrogens of the, of the urea followed by the carbonyl compound. This is a very famous compound, which is the barbituric acid. This is the barbituric acid. Barbituric acid is a sedative. What is the meaning of a sedative? It is something that induces sleep. You can use it to, you, when you give barbituric acid to someone, it will induce sleeping. They will be able to be sedated. So now this is not what you're uh, looking for. What you are trying to synthesize is pyrimidine. This is substituted pyrimidine, which is the barbituric acid. This compound has resonance, or in other words, it's not resonance. Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, it's not resonance. It's a tautomerism. It exists in the form of two tautomers, the barbituric acid or the hydroxy pyrimidines, the ketoenol forms of the compound. This enol, this uh, enol form can be halogenated using phosphorus oxychloride to give halogens in place of the hydroxyl groups and then using the zinc dust and heat, you can actually convert it to the pyrimidine compound. Pyrimidines are no different from pyrid pyridines. In case of pyridine, you had one nitrogen, which was attracting electrons, putting a positive charge on the two, four, and six positions. In case of pyrimidine, it is exactly the same. Again, you have a nitrogen, which is putting a positive charge on the two, four, and six positions, leaving the three and five positions without positive charges. However, the three position now is uh, occupied by a nitrogen, so the only position available for the nucleophile is the five position. So now you have... Uh, sorry, uh, an electrophile. The only position available for an electrophile is the 5 position. In case of pyridine, you had the 
3 and 5. In case of pyrimidine, the 3 is occupied by the nitrogen, so you only have the 5 position. As for nucleophiles, they will attack the 2, 4, and 6, exactly the same as pyridine. If you produce the N oxide, the electrophile will be able to go to the 2, 4, and 6 positions. The derivatives are exactly the same as in case of pyridine. You have the pyrimidines either carrying a methyl group and can perform aldol condensation. You can have the halogens which can be replaced by nucleophiles using nucleophilic substitution reactions and you can have the carboxylic compounds which can be decarboxylated now finally Now, to discuss these uh, uh, reactions, we, as we said, to synthesize pyrimidine, we use an active methylene compound having two carboxylic groups or two ester of the carboxylic groups together with urea to produce the parbituric acid, which will exist in tautomerism between the keto and the enol form. This enol form will be converted using phosphorus oxychloride to the halogenated compound, which can be uh, confer con converted into the pyrimidine product using zinc, dust, and heat. As we have mentioned, we have the electron withdrawing character of the nitrogen, placing the positive charges on the 2, 4, and 6 positions, resulting into the fact that nucleophiles will go to the 2, 4, and 6, while electrophiles will go to the 5 position, since the 3, the three position is already occupied. As for the pyrimidine derivatives, as we said, the methyl derivatives can be reacted with different aldehydes to perform aldol condensation. We have the halogens that can be replaced by a nucleophile, and we have the carboxylic groups that can be decarboxylated. Finally, an example of a drug that contains a pyrimidine ring is the barbituric acid family. We have the barbiturates. These, as I have mentioned, are a class of compounds that act as sedatives. They are a huge class of compounds based on the R's. We have different R's at this carbon, which makes for the different members of the family. If we have one of these R's as phenyl and the other as ethyl, this is the phenyl barbital. This is a very famous sedative hypnotic. And if the R's are both ethyls, this is the barbital. And finally, if both R's are etches, this is the barbituric acid, which is the parent of this huge class of compounds. As we have mentioned, you can prepare them from the malonic acid or the substituted malonic acid, depending on the R's that you need to be available here, together with, an, with a urea molecule to give the parbitals or the barbituric acids. And you have the R's present at this car. This way, we have finished discussing the six-membered nitrogenous heterocyclic compounds. We have discussed the uh, six-membered containing one nitrogen, which is the py pyridine. Then we discussed a pyridine fused to a benzene ring, whether at the B bond, which is the quinoline, or at the C bond, which is the isoquinoline. And then we discussed an six-membered uh, ring containing two nitrogens, which is the pyrimidine compound. As we have seen, 
important drugs present in the market rely on the structure of these compounds, such as uh, the vitamin 3, the INH, the isonicotinamide, uh, hydras the isonicotinic acid hydrazide, and the barbiturate family. These are important drugs present already in the market, and they have in their structure uh, six-membered heterocyclic compounds. Hope you have enjoyed this video, and uh, we will uh, discuss in a later video other uh, heterocyclic compounds.